and welcome to 2011 Studies. Um, this is titled um, Evidence of the Flood and what this is is from an article that I read recently and I've been sort of this whole week been going back and forth uh, googling some of the stuff that's uh, Dr. Bellard, his explorations. Um, and he has a couple of really good talks. Um, he's the one who f discovered the Titanic. And he did some research in the Black Sea. And I don't know if they've gone back uh, recently because even this article that I found was written in uh, 2000. So I know Mr. Camping's work on the biblical calendar history was, um, oh man, I think that was 2000. What did I put down here? Uh, published on May uh, 6, 2003. So the finding of this article was really not have any reference to the dating. They did their own dating. But what's fascinating about this is the date um, of the flood being 7,000 years ago um, was very close in approximation to uh, agreeing and very similar. Since we use the date of 4990 BC, 4990 BC, as the time of the Noetian flood set forth by the biblical calendar of history, camping, I thought I would share an article that very possibly supports that BC timeline. Um, this article was in The Guardian by uh, Tim Radford, science editor, on Wednesday, 13th, uh, September of 2000 and no just 2000 the year 2000 as far as I know the biblical calendar history which is an absolute brilliant work was was published on May 6 2003 so like I mentioned earlier that the the finding of this article didn't have any references of time it, they did their own timelines but they're both in agreement so let me um, now I'm gonna just have certain sections of the uh, the article read and it's really fascinating because apparently um, the Black Sea this area was fresh water and then it just like a flood of uh, salt water came in but the curious thing about this is that it really preserves things very well so if ships would go down and sink it would preserve the ship really well. It preserves, uh, they, they mentioned in one talk, the, the a mummified uh, dolphin. So it's, it's an area that would be um, very well preserved for that period of uh, 7,000 years since the salt water came in to a freshwater area. Um, this is the first uh, part of the article. Evidence found of Noah's Ark flood victims. This article is more than 23 years old. Ship probes land below Black Sea submerged 7,000 years ago and linked to biblical disaster. Marine archaeologists have found the first evidence of a people who perished in a great flood of the Black Sea that has been linked with the story of Noah's Ark. Using robot underwater vehicles more than 300 feet below the sea's surface, they have begun to map a rolling landscape, fed by meandering streams and marked with wattle and daub houses, that was flooded more than 7,000 years ago. The discovery was announced yesterday by Robert Ballard, the scientist who discovered the wrecked Titanic. Now according to the biblical calendar of history, the 7,000th anniversary of the Noetian flood was in the year 2011 with the year of the flood being 4990 BC. Again, this article is written in the year 2000. Here is another quote. The Black Sea was once a freshwater lake, well below sea level. About 7,000 years ago, according to geological evidence, the rising Mediterranean Sea pushed a channel through what is now the Bosphorus, and then seawater poured in at about 200 times the volume of Niagara Falls. The Black Sea would have widened at the rate of a mile a day, submerging the original shoreline under hundreds of feet of salty water. Nearly 100,000 square miles were inundated. Seashells on the beaches of the modern Black Sea are of marine origin, but deep below the surface there are layers of shells of freshwater mollusks, mute witnesses to the shoreline of the ancient lake. In recent studies we have used the flood date to show that important time to the possible year of Christ's return. 
I have done this because there is comparison to in the days before the flood in the Bible. Uh, and it, it, it relates to modern similarities that we all experience in this world currently. Um, this is Matthew twenty four thirty six. Matthew twenty four thirty six. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 37. But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 38. For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark, 39, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 40. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now in the ISA, Matthew 24, 36 says, About yet the day that and the hour not yet one has perceived, not yet the messengers of the heavens, if not the, or if no, the Father of me only. And that, you can study that phrase, um, no man knoweth, uh, and it, it, it comes to the conclusion that it's the Father reveals to the Son, and the, the Son reveals to whoever uh, He chooses is that that whole aspect of no man knowing the day or the hour. Um, I wanted to put that in there because of the word yet, about yet that day and the hour, not yet has one perceived. Um, in Matthew 24, Jesus gives two examples. One is the wise servant who is watching, and two is the evil servant who says, My Lord delays his coming. This is Matthew twenty four forty six. Matthew twenty four forty six. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. 47. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. 48. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. 49. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. 50. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. 51. And shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is why I ask people to partake in the watching for Jesus' return by sharing these videos. We are all part of the body of Christ. I don't monetize these Bible studies at all. I believe in freely you have received, freely give. Um, so sharing these videos in the next couple of years is going to be critical. Now let's get back to the article. I just wanted to sort of establish this whole thing about no man knows the day or the hour. It's, it's something that has to be studied. If you don't study it and you're just quoting one verse, it might appear to be saying something that it's not actually saying. So that's why I wanted to introduce that again. Um, this is the article again. Dr. Ballard began exploring the Black Sea in the hull registered ship Northern Horizon and used side scanning sonar to look for interesting shapes on the seabed over a 200 square mile area, 12 miles off the Turkish coast, near Sinop. The instruments detected targets worth a closer look, so video cameras. Mounted on underwater robot submarines were put to use. We found two ancient ships last night, said Dr. Ballard speaking by phone from his research vessel yesterday. What we were trying to do in our wildest dreams, which is exactly what happened, was find a structure that was evidence, not a sunken ship. Not trash and not geology, but characteristic of human habitation. What they found was an area of human habitation, they found it. Above an area submerged too deeply for human divers. The sonar instruments revealed details of the landscape. On September 9th they sent robot scouts down to objects which looked like beams and branches. Debris that might have been the stiffening for Waddle and Daub homes. So what they had found was an area of human habitation. They found a rectangular area up to 12 feet by 25 feet, over which an ancient mud and wooden house had collapsed, and they found tools of highly polished stone together with fragments of ceramics. 
What we are looking at is a culture that is definitely thousands of years old, said Fred Hebert, an archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania, who is also on the ship. The flood is an event that is geologically known, and for us to find a structure in 150 meters of water means that these people were definitely living there before it flooded, so it is pre-Greek. It is a different world and it deserves a great deal of attention and years of study to help us truly identify who these people were. I just found this very, very fascinating. It's like, man, you, you would think, uh, well, there, there's not many people who do this kind of sea exploration. Uh, matter of fact, there's very few, and Dr. Bellow is one of them. Now, there's you can search his works on YouTube, Dr. Bellow, or Dr. Robert Bellow, Ballard. Um, there's a one talk from the Linus Pauling Memorial Lecture Series um, called the Black Sea uh, Black Sea Archaeology, and that starts. You know, they they always do a lot of talks before then they introduce people, and but that starts at 53 minutes in the video, and then there's a question and answer. Uh, now I don't agree with everything that he responded to because a lot of a lot of scientists tend to do this. They they don't they don't really look at what the Bible is literally saying as as far as um, that the flood you know covered the the earth they, they they don't fully study the windows of heaven and the fountains of the deep opening up that's a huge huge aspect of of what the flood did and the mountain peaks how you know the waters covered the mountain peaks it was a deluge times a million I mean, if you want to look at it that way, it wasn't just a localized area. Like they, they always try to do this. Oh, yeah, it was probably a flood in, in the, you know, the the area of Turkey. Or so you know, you have to be careful with some of the the things they say. It's almost like you know, there's there's some um, there's some. Uh, programs that they they list that they, they have these scientists and these experts and they get on there and they're like you know they they start talking out of their own mind instead of what the bible actually says and i i guess you can't expect that because you can't expect them to be you know biblically accurate because they don't study the bible they might read it here and there but these experts make me laugh they really do so anyway, that's that's what this is. This is just a look at this. Now the reason I wanted to, you know, lay this forth uh, as far as the evidence of the flood, and there's way more evidence than that. If you can go into um, Answers in Genesis, there's a couple of websites you can go, and they have all kinds of evidence of the flood. But the date, the timeline of it being 7,000 years as of 2011, the 7,000 year anniversary. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because we were looking at the year 2026 and 2031 being the ending of the 1335 day period uh, from trumpets to Pentecost. So we have to like sort of establish why we're using that timeline and the biblical calendar of history I believe is accurate. The more I look at that, the more I study it, it's it's very very fascinating it's it's a work that it's i don't know how mr camping did this because it's like i know he was busy with his open forums and all the the shows he had going on but to be able to sit down and also work on that it's pretty amazing um so the seven thousand year anniversary in 2011 we we looked at the, i think the last one we looked at was um how many days it was from May 21, 2011, the anniversary of the flood, to May 21, 2031. And it was um, obviously 7,000 years in 2011, then 7,000 days plus 306 days. And we wanted to see the factors of 306, and it, it was amazing that it showed 2 times 153. Um, which could mean by the time we reach 2031, if 2026 is not the year, uh, let me clarify that. <laughs> but if, if we reach May 21, 2031, it might be entering a time period of two times 153, uh, a great time of salvation. <clears throat> so, because the disciples caught 153 fish, at the command of Christ to cast forth on the right side of the ship. So 
that there was uh, three times three times seventeen. There was a a big spiritual number to seventeen relating to uh, redemption, salvation. So that's where we're at. We're I'm still looking at the twelve ninety days. Um, we looked at the uh, the forty uh, the thirteen thousand and forty three years since creation, and that forty three as an like a a trail in number is important in 2031 because the 1290 days is uh, three times uh, 430 years. And that's as far as I've really gotten on the um, 1290 days. It, that, to me, the 1290 days is, is harder to know when it, it what starts and when it ends because it just, it says it in the book of Daniel and then it follows up with the 1335 days is blessed is he who waits and comes to the days of 1335. So we, God has revealed the 1335 days. I'm pretty, pretty locked solid with that. You know, whatever year, at least we have options. You know, whatever um, group of years from 2022 to 2026 or from 2027 to 2031. So we have that. The 1290 days, there's a lot of evidence that when you look around and talk about a time of desolation, yeah, we could very well be in that period right now. So, um, you know, but, you know, everything could get worse, obviously. That's, that's an option. But uh, I think it's important to, to sort of um, underscore why we're using the year uh, of the flood being in 2011 and why that starting point to the end of the 1335 days is significant uh, or that starting point or of creation the starting point of creation to either the year 2026 or the year 2031 being a, a conclusion so that's it um, the next study I'm still working on the 1290 we're going to be looking um, oh I forgot one thing here um, the, there is a book called The Flood that Dr. Bell is referring to and 5400 BC was the date that they arrived at now Camping's cap, biblical calendar of history is 4990 BC so you're looking you're looking at just a, a separation of 400 plus years so it's it's pretty close very very close to um to this uh, book that he was referring to. So anyway, um, that's it for now. I'll, I'll post another study on the, uh, I think it's the 1290. I'm, I'm going to post that next. So God bless you. Email me at 2011studies at gmail.com or comment below and like and subscribe if you can. It helps the channel go out further. Thanks.